just for 30 seconds, I'm going to go check on my dinner because it is cooking. You go ahead, mate. What are you cooking? Shepherd's pie. Uh, the rock and roll list of all dinners, uh, the shepherd's pie. And I got a little bit of smoked paprika in there just to give it a little, little bit of fun. Um, it's got, yeah, it's going to be really tasty. But I need to go check on it. To make go, sure check it go check it. Go check it. This is Sheer Isolation. It's presented by Kieran Moore in Trowbridge and John Ponting in Cricklade. Oh, 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 it is chef's kiss. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us. This is Sheer Isolation. I am John in Cricklade. My colleague Kieran is in Trowbridge, looking rather cool for some bizarre reason. Hi, Kieran. Bizarre? I'm fucking, I'm bloody cool, John. Beep, beep, beep. You know what I really hate, John? The sort of people that wear glasses, like shades indoors. They're the worst kind. But I've just noticed I put my shades on and because I'm outdoors, everything's super bright. So it's, um, it's wonderful. You look like a blind man. <laughs> All right, yeah, fair enough. I guess they're not actually that dark in real life, but they, they look proper like blacked out glasses. <laughs> no, they're not. They're, um, they're really cheap glasses from like, um, I don't know, the pound shop. Anyway, the <laughs> um, purpose of this show is to promote the local music and arts scene um, across the west of England. We do that every week by playing a couple of tracks and talking to a guest from the industry. Um, no different this week, we're being joined by a cartoon illustrator, uh, Jess Bradley. She's got a new book coming out, so we'll uh, be talking to her about that. We're, we're doing the, the kind of the push in the promotion thing this week, Kieran. Love that. I love that. Yeah, I, I do love promoting good, positive things. <laughs> and yeah, Kieran, since, uh, since our last podcast last week, we've had a heck of a weekend. Um, Saturday night was the big night. The cheese and grain, me and you, a few drinks. Um, it all got a bit messy. There was friends. There was love. There was music. Um, it was just wonderful. We all got horrifically. Um, what, what's all this? Or oh, we all? Some of us had to drive. <laughs> Some of us yeah, had to drive us you, you home. <laughs> all of us, but you. <laughs> <laughs> which, which, John? I cannot thank you enough. It was wonderful. It was just a magical evening. Uh, Saturday, I woke up a little bit, sorry, Sunday, woke up a little bit of a hangover, not too bad. That evening, went back to the cheese and grain again, watched The Lost Trades, James Harriman, uh, Robin Calvert, and then the headliners, the Blackwater County Band, um, big face melting, punk rock, jiggy, kind of frogging, moggy style. And then Monday, we had David Young from the Vicks funeral for, for a really sad event. It was incredibly. Um, an uplifting experience and I cannot wish all my love to Anna um, and the rest of her family and Dave's family and um, yeah. long, long will his memory remain so what an amazing weekend um, even if it was slightly tempered by something we would all rather not have done it was still a brilliant wonderful lovely experience talking of the wonderful weekend we had let's talk about our first song and our product placement because the first song we're going to play is Luke DeCicio um, and he happens to be my product placement this week. Yay! I don't actually know where he lives now. I want to say Bath. I think he's based in Bath. Uh, but I know him from Swindon, from the Swindon scene. The guy could loop to Sissio. This is an album called Goodbye Folk Boy. You can just about say it's quite a dark album cover. But um, it is the most gorgeous. It'll be even you... darker with your sunglasses on. Yeah. You follow me on Instagram. I did put a wicked picture of this vinyl up. But look at that. Look at that smoky red vinyl is just gorgeous you get the sunlight through that it's like chef's kiss a bit like Kirsty clinch last week his videos are a work of art and this video is no exception it's a wonderful video for a wonderful musician and a wonderful song um it's called i gave you all my love and the thing is that you you bought two of his vinyls didn't you and and i, I don't want to kind of blow me john. on the trumpet here but john what? john what did you just say? You bought two of his vinyl? You said vinyls. Did I? The of vinyl is vinyl. They're like sheep. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even notice myself doing that. You brought two of his vinyl? Yes, I did. <laughs> Actually, John, I bought one. It was buy one, get one free. But I can't tell if that's because it's my birthday or not. I don't know. All right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you would have left them in the venue as well if it wasn't for me. <laughs> yes, I would have done. <laughs> Thanks for saving them for me, John. <laughs> Spin the world beneath my feet, peace and porcelain that brush off the street, putting needles in a tree. If 
Finding rhythm in a stream I've been moving through a dream Never felt so much like a thief with my new home Didn't work to the means when I walked in at the start When I'm with you, I will love you But I've seen how words don't hold a heart Gave you all my love, I gave you all the love I had to give. Gave you all my love, I gave you all the love I had to give. Gave you all. Love is where it won't die In conclusion of this time Love is why Love is where it won't die Gave you all my love, I gave you all the love I had to give. Gave you all my love, I gave you all the love I had to give. Conclusion of his time Love is wild Love is where a woman dies With Luke's music, it's it's not like chuck it on in the background whilst you're cooking music or, you know, in a noisy bar. It's headphone, dial in, and for a moment let him take you away somewhere. And it's that really ethereal kind of really nod to the 60s. There's loads of like Nick Drake notes in there or you know, even a bit of Dylan-esque in there. Lots of wonderful um, influences. And he's just fantastic. I, I found his his vocals to be quite haunting in, in a good way. Yeah, they very much really kind of get in, into you, don't they? They do, they do. Yeah. Um, and I've been I've, I've listened to that album quite a lot since the weekend. Um, he's got, he's got two, he gave me two albums. One of them is a dark album like menacing lyrics and one of them was a light album with really lovely lyrics and so i've been listening to them quite a lot since i got them for both phases of my weekend the dark and the lights <laughs> so yeah that that track was i gave you all my love from uh, luke decisio right uh, you've already done your bit of product placement so i'm going to move straight on to my bit of product placement which is in to our, our guest this week so um i can't remember when this book came out was it earlier this year or, or at the end of last year it is called a day in the life of a poo a new and you it's a, a kid's. It's kind of a, a kid's encyclopedia. So if okay. I just open up the pages, you see, it, it talk, this, oh. this particular page is uh, talking all about the squid. colossal squid. Tells you everything about squid. This page mm. tells you all about plants and Japanese knotweed. For for, uh, I was going to say for people who like horrible history, everybody loves horrible history. Yes, and it, it's kind of done in that kind of style, that kind of comedic fashion. But this little mini encyclopedia w- was coloured in and illustrated. I shouldn't say coloured in, that's rude. Illustrators. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's a colouring in it. Uh, by, by this week's guest, who is uh, Jess Bradley. So she hasn't 
just do books. She's also done stuff for the Beano and does all kinds of. Cool. Um, you her styling and her her work is very bespoke to her. You, know, you, get, you can look at it and say, "Oh, that's that's clearly something from Jess." She's got a new book coming out, so, so we thought we'd invite her on and uh, have a chat to her. I pretty much started doing stuff straight out of uni, which would have been two thousand and three, um, and cocked it all up basically because <laughs> I was young and I didn't know what I was doing. Um, and I, I ended up working in a comic shop for about three and a half years in Bristol um, and got into self-publishing. Well, I just started building up all my work and then just sending stuff off to publishers and seeing if there'd be any bites and didn't get any for a while because a lot of uh, like, tr uh, especially traditional uh, kids publishing, they are very set in their ways about what they like and like cartoony work just wasn't what they wanted really. So I, that's why I started self-publishing a lot of my stuff. Um, but then comics got cool um, and everybody wants them now. So. <laughs> well, the question is, when were comics not cool? Because <laughs> oh, I did illustration at university and I swear you mentioned the C word. Uh, not that C word, mm. comic C word. <laughs> they just didn't want to know. And it was so frustrating. But now, of course, you've got like sequential illust illustration degrees, which is awesome. But yeah, it's been so hard to get publishers to see that, yeah, kids do like comics. There's, you know, there's a market <laughs> for it. And it was through my, one of my self-published books that I got into The Phoenix, which is... Oh, I know The Phoenix. Yes. <laughs> subscription based i had that for my son actually many many years ago oh did you ah I've, I've been with them for god it's nearly seven years now yeah i sent them off some samples oh a bit of, there's a bit of my west country coming out there some samples samples <laughs> <laughs> and um yeah and i've just been doing my comic for them ever since and then um it was through a uh, another kind of mutual friend in comics that saw my stuff in the Phoenix and recommended me to the Beano. Um, and that's how I just write for them. I don't do any drawing for them because I, I'm not good enough for the Beano. <laughs> um, I write, I do write for them. And uh, yeah, I think I've been writing for them for since 2018, I think. That is a dream, isn't it, to write for the Beano? You know, I actually coasting on imposter syndrome with the Beano because it's kind of like I really struggle to come up with ideas for the Beano it's like my own ideas are fine because my work's very stupid and yeah but, but with the Beano it's very it's still quite traditional in certain ways and there, there's a lot of things you're not allowed to do with the characters like right. poop jokes Mm -mm, no whereas in the phoenix they're like can we get some more poo in this joke and <laughs> very, yeah especially i was writing billy whiz for quite a while and oh, there's only so many stories you can write about a kid who runs fast and it's sort of a <laughs> really struggle and a couple of times you, i'd submit a script and they go somebody did that one last year you might have to do another one so and they're very aware that you know 70 odd years worth of comics there's only a certain set of ideas you can recycle. I send some, some sample work off to someone and they go, oh, not quite right. And then four years later, you'd hear, oh, I don't know if you remember, you sent me some samples four years ago. Do you want to work on this project? And it's it's really weird it, the way it sort of happens. So, and, and I, I quite like that, actually, what you described, <laughs> because it does show that, you know, you, you apply for a job and they keep your details on record. But I guess yes. art is very similar to music in many respects, that creative approach. And yeah. that with artists apply for a gig and I go, not right now. I haven't got quite the yeah. line. Ex but yeah, it's yeah. all sort of right place, right time. Has lockdown not really, or COVID not really affected your, your workflow? Because people are still reading comics. Oh, yeah. Well, it was funny because when it first started kicking off, it was just before the London Book Fair, which is like the biggest publishing event in the UK and everyone was going mental so like on Twitter I'm friends with like loads of uh, like editors and art directors and stuff and just general like illustrators and artists and everyone was like oh how is this going to affect publishing oh 
and once everybody realized they could work from home and it was actually okay um yeah it was it was fine i think besides the whole mental exhaustion and kind of mental health aspect of everything going on um yeah publishing's been doing fine and i mean if anything i've had more work i was a bit of a hermit before lockdown anyway so it it you know again apart from like you know the mental part of it it it, it didn't affect anything too much for me which is good but I mean that yeah I, I know a lot of friends who have lost a lot of work and like musicians and actors and stuff yeah. which, which really sucks every, every time you talk about your past I kind of think you're, you're just living out spaced <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yes it, it's it's quite nice because all of my friends are pretty much hermits too and we, we're just all like on like <laughs> <laughs> on twitter and um like Facebook Messenger. So it's, it's, we've got like little bubble groups of people we talk to on, on Facebook. So it's quite nice in a way. I mean, thank God for social media because I'm the worst at ringing up people. Or if someone rings me, I check. If I don't recognise the number, I'll check it on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I do that. Really bad. Was it last year when the, the, this one came out, The Day in the Life? Was yes. It a, yeah. How did you get involved with this one? And it kind of steamrolled really because it ended up on Blue Peter and all sorts didn't it? I think it was oh god it was when we were still in our old house in Bristol it must have been about 2000 and I want to say 2011 so I'll stick with that I did like a, a comic for us like a free science like newspaper comic and it, it was called A Day in the Life of a Poo and it was literally just a one-page story about a cow doing a poo and how the poo like goes through the ground and grows back into the grass and blah, blah, blah. And um, the publisher I worked with, Buster Books, I think when I'd sent, I'd sent them some samples and it was very much like, oh, we like your work, but not yet. And then in 2016, I believe they got in touch and said, oh, we'd love to make this into a whole book. Are you interested? I said, oh yeah, sounds great. Another two years pass. <laughs> And then it's like, oh, we're starting to, are you still interested? This is what we're, we're thinking of doing. It's like, yeah, yeah, I'm ready to go. And uh, that's just how that started. And um, yeah, it got super popular, won a Blue Peter Award. <laughs> the second one's done and is coming out in September and that's about history. And I'm just about to start working on the third book, which is about space. So I'm really, really looking forward to that one. Yeah. I say it's kind of like an encyclopedia, but it reminds me a lot of um, how horrible histories works in the way that they, yeah. they pick out the, the disgusting bits and they just make it fun yes. and, and make it really approachable. <laughs> There's no taboo. <laughs> no, no. And that, that's what was really good about it. And that's what's good about the science, uh, not the science one, uh, the history one. So I got to draw a lot of comical decapitated heads. And like, the, the, yeah, like the, the page about the Aztecs is pretty good because I got to uh, draw a guy holding a heart, human heart up to the sun, but kind of make it look funny. And uh, yeah, it's, it, it's really nice. And it was, yeah, it was so well received. Um, Sounds fantastic. So, yeah. so we, we knew that it'd been nominated and we were sort of waiting to hear back. And then I got an email from... Um, the, like the PR person who I, I get on really well with at the publisher, she was like, oh, just to let you know, we've won. And I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And then it was like, shit, I have to go on Blue Peter. And I just had a complete meltdown because I was like, I don't want to go on the telly. I really, really don't want, and I just had this random like panic and like my husband will tell you, I just burst into tears <laughs> in the kitchen. He was like, what's the matter? You've just won an award. I was like, I don't want to go on the telly. <laughs> and because it was still, it was like the second lockdown. Can we do it via Skype? And they, they were really good. They let us do it on Skype. So that wasn't too bad. Uh, you've got some uh, new books coming out, haven't you? Some new publications? Yeah, they, those are the, hang on, that way. Sweet. So it's like super dweeb and the pencil of destiny and it's like kind of half half written half comics cool. so hopefully it'll appeal to kids <laughs> <laughs> people in general <laughs> what's super dweeb about a super dweeb uh, it's, well, it's about a kid who yeah he's a bit of a nerd he likes drawing he goes on a school trip to a radioactive island 
and his pencil that he's drawing with uh, gets um, dropped into radioactive waste and it turns into a giant pencil that can make his drawings come to life. And oh, hilarity right. ensues. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so uh, uh, yeah, there's two books at the minute, and there's going to be another two over the next year. So I'm uh, just about to start working on the third one of that as well. <laughs> let's, uh, let's bring it around to a bit of music just to finish off. Um, yeah. yeah, because I, I did ask you what kind of music you're listening to with, while you're while you're doodling while you, when you're doing all your artwork. So uh, yes. what's your, uh, you, you kind of went with synthwave. I didn't actually discover Synthwave until I think it was 2014. Um, somehow someone had put on, on Tumblr, when Tumblr was good, <laughs> before it got like really crap, um, somebody did like a Synthwave playlist and it had like like Power Glove and Perturbator and um, Laserhawk and all those kind of ones. And I listened to it and I was like, where has this music been all my life? It's like, <laughs> it's like video games, 80s films. Um, yeah, so I, I listen to a lot of that. Um, film soundtracks, game soundtracks, I listen to quite a lot. Nine Inch Nails, I'm, I still really like. Timber Tomba, you ever heard of those guys? There's like one track of theirs on Breaking Bad and it's like, it goes so well with the scene. And I was like, ooh this music and that's how I got into them Midsummer and Hereditary those soundtracks I listen to quite a lot it's, it's really it's so weird I because I, I love horror films and horror games survival horror so I, I listen to a lot of that stuff when I'm drawing kids books which is really weird or I, I watch a lot of video game long plays um while I'm drawing and that's always a lot of horror based stuff as well so <laughs> I'm sure that helped when you're doing the history when you're when you're drawing people holding human hearts. That, that, that kind of thing must. Help. <laughs> yeah, I just put on dead space and, and copy from that. And, yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, we've um, we picked one of the tracks off your playlist, which was a band uh, called Gunship. So we're going to play "Fly for yes. Your Life."
So we have just played a track called Fly For Your Life by a, a band called Gunship, who are a UK-based synthwave band. They, they kind of take inspiration from old video games and, and arcades and, and create songs out of it. It's really... And got some lovely videos on there as well. Uh, let's have some news, shall we, Kieran? Um, I think the big news we need to talk about this week, I'll just let you go off onto one of your rants. I'll just say, whoa, mad at you and let you crack on. Well, <laughs> uh, it was unsurprising that the government have done absolutely nothing to support the events industry, uh, again, despite um, uh, constant asking and knocking on the door. Um, and I was thinking about this, actually, as I was driving home today in preparation for this soon. I was thinking, you can, you, you can take it one of two ways. Either the events industry are completely lying, and every, everybody, for, right the way from Womad and Peter Gabriel to MVT, to every, in, every individual bespoke of, uh, venue, etc., are all liars, or the government aren't helping and, and refusing to help. Um, so on the WOMAD post, they wrote that they had repeatedly requested to be a test event. They never got a response back. Um, and yet people are very fairly pointing out that sports events, which are outdoors, I still have, cl- what, Wembley last night was, t- was two thirds full, 60,000. Now, come on, 60,000 people, 2,000 trees is 15,000 people. I, don't know. I would just say WOMAD is, uh, had a cap of 40,000 this year. There you go. I just, I just think they are purposely going out of their way to not be helpful. Um, and if you think otherwise, that is entirely up to you to think otherwise. But I would say you've not been paying attention. Um, to, it's just an absolute, it's an attack on our cultural and heritage. You know, music is what a brilliant thing that the UK does and has done for a long time. And they're just not interested. Um, and I, I, it just makes me savage, frankly. Um, so feel free to disagree and call in and tell me why I'm wrong. The the same weekend as WOMAD is um, the Formula One Grand Prix at Silverstone, which is going oh, ahead. Which is going ahead. 140,000. And that's a, a camping weekend as well. I think they're doing camping there. They normally do. I mean, I have no doubt it will be a test event. And that's fine. You know, test it all you like. But why not test WOMAD as well? I just it just the whole thing stinks, frankly. Um, it is it is an attack on our uh, cultural heritage. It is an attack on our, our, our events industry. Um, there's just no other way to view it, in my opinion. Unfortunately, there have been some test events. So I, I mean, I'm not in, I'm not saying they haven't tried. I'm saying they're not doing enough. It makes me feel so sorry for Peter Gabriel because he is obviously a legend in the UK music scene. He doesn't do things uh, by half measures. It would have been done properly. Um, he's he's a sort of person you can absolutely implicitly trust. Uh, so it just, it's just gutting, devastating. This is how it's going to be two years by the time certain things return, like two thousand trees, like um, Glast- Glastonbury, like WOMAD, um, and many of the other bearded theory and all the other festivals out there that have been postponed. I can't confident confidently go away and organise and book things, and that is insanely frustrating because you know I want to get on and make make you know make things happen and make changes to positive cha- impacts on people's lives. I just can't do it. It's devastating. We should wrap up. So if, if, if anyone wants to email sheerisolation at gmail.com is where you can um, get it to, to contact us. Uh, you can find past episodes and um, our playlist of all of our tracks on YouTube and Spotify and all the other um, streaming podcast services. We'll leave it at that then. Cheers, Karen. Bye. <laughs>